The introduction of a new pharmaceutical entity onto the market is a complicated process requiring considerable work. Reactions that transform raw material into active ingredients under carefully controlled laboratory conditions are scaled up to industrial proportions. How will they work on a large scale? How tightly controlled must they be? The active drug must be made up so that it can be presented to patients. Will tablets, capsules or liquid be best? And in what dosage? Formal testing procedures, standards and specifications for the raw materials, active ingredients and final product must be established. Protocols are prepared for regulatory authorities. And commercial decisions present themselves. What is the marketing strategy? Will the drug be released worldwide or territory by territory? What about packaging, support materials and so on? The company must establish the supply of raw materials for manufacture and how to store and distribute the active intermediaries and final product. Introducing a drug normally takes years. With Retrovir, it was a different story. On September the 19th, 1986, a double-blind clinical study to evaluate Retrovir was stopped because it was obvious that the drug was effective in reducing mortality in patients. Wellcome decided that its introduction was a top priority. The active ingredient in Retrovir is Zydovudine. Zydovudine is manufactured from the basic raw material thymidine by a complex multistage process. Barry Alcock works in primary manufacturing at Dartford. In September 1986, uh, we began to investigate the process um, and to investigate the plant requirements for that process to enable us to begin manufacturing in January 1987. Um, this involved quite major modifications to our existing plant. The unique thing about the plant is that we, we, we try and keep it as flexible as possible so that we can reconfigure it to cope with different products. And that enables us to make a wide variety of different chemicals in the area. We needed a massive amount of engineering work to actually enable manufacture to begin in January. Staff from the chemical division, engineering divisions, and the development laboratories were all brought together in project teams to coordinate all the efforts. Most of the engineering work was completed by Christmas uh, 1986, but uh, some work did go over the Christmas period, and it did require that a lot of people spent most of their Christmas working within the division and didn't get to see a lot of their families. The Zydovudine goes from primary manufacturing to tablet manufacturing to be put into capsules. Dave Lemon worked on the project. The decision was made that we would launch on a particular date and then we all moved heaven and earth to make sure that we, we met that date. And that's, in fact, I think, uh, from the date that was originally given to us, I think we, we, in fact, launched a couple of months beforehand. First we heard of it was last September. It was suggested that we would have to go into capsule production. We bought in capsule filling equipment, capsule weighing equipment, and capsule banding equipment. We had to get that very, very quickly. The normal lead time has been about six months. And in most cases, the equipment was delivered within three months. We then had to commission it and, and get it going. So there was a lot of hours put in by everybody, you know, engineering staff and so on. We had to build new areas even. I think everybody got involved in it with a good will. That's from the operators upwards. They, they all assisted, uh, they all helped. Because it was new equipment, it was the most modern equipment that was available, and that helped as well. 